So I recently went to the movies and watched Dune 2. And while watching, I got a little bit of terrain inspiration. And I come up with a pretty decent idea about how to make some easy sand dunes. First things first, if you're following along with the way I'm making these sand dunes, please wear a respirator because we're going to be melting a lot of foam, I think. There's some harsh chemicals that can be produced if you get this hot enough. Wear a respirator. Safety first. So I plan on selling these in my store. So I do have templates that I've traced onto these pieces. You don't have to use templates. If you're just making it whatever size you want, do that. I just try to keep things all the same size, make it simple. For most of my builds, I try to keep things basic shapes and sizes. That way I don't get too confused when I'm making hundreds of pieces of terrain. I think we are gonna start with the smallest one. This is the smallest one. It's maybe five by six inches. I don't know for sure. I'm not gonna pull out a ruler. And today I'm just gonna be using this hot wire cutter. So we're just gonna be imagining wind blowing from it this way. So it's gonna be blowing stuff over and this is gonna be sort of a cliffish looking thing. You'll see. Like that. And then we're gonna be doing the less steep side. Very sorry if you can't hear me very well while wearing this mask. But this time we're gonna be melting it quite a bit with a lighter, so we want to make sure that we're wearing masks and have the ventilation. So I think that's good enough for our basic shape, just like that. One side is quite a bit steeper than the other side because the wind's blowing this way. You can make it a little bit less rounded as well if you want, or you can make it more rounded. Doesn't matter too much. This is our experimental piece, our first little experimental piece. This is the piece that we're actually going to be working on in this video. This is the perfect shape for a sand dune, I think. But I will be showing off all pieces that I'm making today in the video. So stay tuned till the end of the video for the glamour shots. So you can see them all set up in their glory. And we're just going to be cutting this guy the same way. Cut out the basic shape. We'll do the steep side first. Like that. All right, now this is gonna be the part where you really wanna wear your mask. So we're gonna be using this kitchen torch to shape these a little bit more and hopefully make some like S type striations in the sand. So I'm throwing on my mask real quick and I'm gonna turn my fan up a little bit. So sorry if you can hear that really good or anything. And I'm just gonna start shaping this guy. Smoothing it out. So there's that. Let's smooth it out a little bit. I want a little bit more detail there. So I'm going to try to use the back end of this needle. Just add a little bit more. Like that. So yeah, doing it like this is gonna prevent us from having to use like sculpt the mold or plaster or anything that takes forever to dry. And we'll be able to just get onto the next step, not wait days for it to dry or hours for it to dry, which is ideal when you're doing a business like mine or you just don't have that much time to work on terrain. Now we're gonna be wanting to cover these in a light layer of sand. 
And if you want a little bit finer, you could get some grout or whatever. I'm going to use this really fine mesh strainer to get some finer sand out of this because I don't want a bunch of big chunks of sand. So I'm going to fill some of that in and get our glue. So there's no special trick here. I'm just going to put a real light layer of glue on everything. Cause I don't want the sand to be deep or anything like that. I just want to dust everything with the sand. Then we're going to put it over here, shake our sand onto it. Try not to get all over my desk, but I probably will. So there is our piece covered in sand. And really, if you wanted to, you could just paint the foam first, brown or something, or tan. And then cover it in sand, and then varnish it, and just leave it like this. But, I really like the painted look, so I decided to go this route, and then we're going to paint everything after. You'll see. So much for not getting it all over the desk. Um, so I just set that aside to dry. It... It's a really thin coat of PVA glue, so it shouldn't take too long to dry, but I'm going to set it aside for about a half an hour, and then we'll get to painting the undercoat. All right, and while I have that drying, I just wanted to jump on camera real quick and say how much I appreciate everybody who's subscribed to this channel. I recently hit 5,000 subscribers, and that's really a big deal for me. I know for a lot of people that doesn't seem like much, but for somebody who thought they may not even get a thousand subscribers starting a YouTube channel. That's a pretty big deal. And I wasn't really going for subscribers, honestly. I honestly, when I started the YouTube channel, I didn't really know what I was going for. I just read in marketing books that it was like the second biggest search engine. So I figured if I was gonna have a shop online, I probably ought to have a YouTube channel as well. But it quickly became a little side hobby on its own, not just, this. I mean, I built the big dungeon. If you haven't seen that dungeon, check it out. It's, a, I think, 36 videos long. And now I have, I think, like 125 videos on my channel. Or 100 and something. It's over 100. I don't know. Over 100 videos on my channel. Who knew I would even have that many videos on my channel? Some of them are kind of bad. Some of them are good. Most of the ones I made in the last two years, I think, are pretty good. I put a lot of time and effort into every single one of those. But at the beginning, beginning, I was really learning what I was doing. So I just want to thank everybody who's joined me. Now let's get on with the video. I think everything should be dry by now. Now, I keep forgetting to say what I'm using to black undercoat these. I don't use Mod Podge and black paint. Rather, I use high endurance house paint. I just find it works a lot better. It's better coverage, doesn't clump up. I don't know. I've had better luck with the house paint than I have the Mod Podge. So, yeah. Um, pretty basic thing. Just paint it black. I guess just be careful and try not to leave a bunch of brush strokes and try not to pull all the sand off, if possible. And if you have to do two coats, you have to do two coats. I'm doing kind of a thin coat on these ones because I want the sand to show through pretty good. So I'm just being careful about that. It looks like the sand's actually gonna stick pretty good, so shouldn't have to worry too much. I only let these dry for about 20 minutes too. So yeah, I'm gonna finish painting these and then I'm gonna set these in front of a fan again. I'm gonna paint the top and the bottom, by the way. And I'll set them in front of a fan to dry and then we'll get on with the paint job. All right, that's all dry now. I'm going to be painting it. I'm going to be painting it with first a layer of territorial beige. This is just the apple barrel craft paint that you get at Walmart. But there's a few colors that I really like and this is one of those colors. It goes on nice and opaque and I'm going to pretty much cover the whole thing. There might be a little bit of black that shows through but that's fine. Wear a glove so I don't mess up the paint job. 
and get it all over my hands. And like I said, I'm doing this pretty thin. I don't know if I said that, but in my mind I said that. Not really wanting too much of the black to show through. But a little bit for sure is gonna be showing through. Just like that. Now we're gonna build up this khaki color. So khaki is like my basic desert color that I use. And I'm gonna throw some on our palette. We only want a little bit at first. I'm gonna do everything across it like this for now. That way maybe we'll pick up some details in all the crevices that I made. That's looking pretty good. All right, now we're gonna be doing a creamy dry brush. This is antique white. We're gonna get a lot off the brush and just start highlighting everything. So I'm gonna pay special attention to this ridge up here, but I'm really gonna dry brush the whole thing just so I can pick up some of the sand particles and more of these ridges. Look at that, that's looking great. And I think I'm gonna leave right here just a little bit darker than right here, just so that ridge shows up a little bit better. Look at that, look at that. I think I'm happy like that. Look at that beauty. That's just how I imagined it. So that's always a good thing. All I have left to do now is varnish everything. And I'm gonna be doing that off camera with my airbrush with some of this polycrylic matte finish. If you happen to want to see me varnish things, I've done it in other videos. So stick around to the end of the video and I'll have a suggestion for you there. So like I said, we're just gonna do that off camera. So we're just skipping to the glamour shots right now. <music> 